My name is Anders Jensen. Let's learn some UiPath. Today we will see how we can get web data to Excel with UiPath. It was a question I got from Pankai Gupta. He asked me if we I can create a workflow that goes to Abuteget SA, that's this uh, guy up here. Then we want to search a product from Excel. We want to click one of the products and capture the var number. Let me show you that. For example, we can search for A, that is the first product. Then we want to click on the first result, that's this guy, and we want to capture the var number. We want to do that for X amount uh, number of products. I created an Excel sheet and let us inspect that. Thank you, Pengai, for a great question. So I close this one down. I go to my Excel sheet, where which I store on the desktop. We can see that I have three products here. For example, let's just search for the first one here. Copy that. Go to Apotheket. Let's take the front page each time so we know the page is in line. Then I click Enter. And I click the first uh, item. And I want to get this VARO number out. Let's go create that in UiPath. I navigate to the front page. And then I go to UiPath. We can see that the two uh, column headers is, by the way, product and VARO number. So let us close this one down. The first thing we do in UiPath is to go to Home and then Tools. Install the Chrome extension if you want to use Chrome, which I do. And then restart your UiPath instance. We want to read the Excel sheet. So find a Excel application scope and drag it in. First, we must have the workbook path. You can either uh, enter it directly here, you can browse for the file, or as best practice, get the path here, copy as path, right, shift right click, copy as path, then go down to variables and create a variable. str, we can call it Excel path. And then I paste it in, in the value. This one is good because we can uh, we don't hard code in the variables we just get it here so if they change we just need to change it one place that is particularly good if we need to use this path several places so and then we can just uh, put in the str excel path up here now we can choose not to have visible operations that is uh, we don't want to open excel and see it perform the iteration and stuff so just have this invisible invisible then we run a read range still from the excel activities so drag in a read range we want to read sheet one that's fine then we want to read it out to a data table a data table corresponds to an excel sheet it looks like the same it's just a data table which we can do uh, several operations on so Control k to create a new variable we can call it dt data like this so now we have a data table down here and what we need to do now is that we need to open up a browser. So find a open browser here and drag it in. We will go up to the browser type because we want to automate in Chrome. So pick Chrome. Then we need a URL. And what we can do is that we can just copy, paste this URL. And again, we want to create a variable. So create variable URL and then paste it in here. Remember to have quotation marks now because we just copy paste the pasted the address like this. Then we can have the str URL like this. So now we open up the browser. Then we need to iterate through each row in our data table, which corresponds to the Excel sheet. But we need to iterate through each row and type in whatever in the product column for each of the rows. So how do we do that? Well, that's just a for each row. For each row here, we drag this guy in. And we say for each row in the DT data, that was the data table that we created up here. Let me delete this body. I think it's just fill. And so for each of the rows, then we want to type something in, in the search field up here. So let me find a type into here drag this guy in where do we want to type in we need to it indicate that element inside the browser so click here and pick the search field like this 
what do we want to type in? Well, we want to type in whatever is in the current row, that's row, which refers to this row up here. Then we need to specify the column, that's the item, that's column. And then in quotation marks, pick the column name. I call mine product, like this. And then since it's an object, we need to convert it to a string, like this. Now we just need to click enter because we want to search. So click the plus sign here and find the enter like this. So now we search and then we can do that here. Let me just say A, doesn't matter. Let me click and we want to get the first, we want to click here and then we want to get the VADA number. So let me go back to UI path. I find a click activity here, drag it underneath still inside there the for each row remember that click and it just click on the picture because as we can see here we can click all over now um, we just have a little problem let's say we click here how uh, we need to inspect the selector to make sure that it's indeed here we click and not here so what we can do is to click the three ribbons we can click edit the selector and we can see that it's not validating, but it will be in a few seconds when we run it. And we can see that we got this IDX. I think, I'm, I'm sure it will work. So now we clicked it. Let's, um, then we should navigate to the next one. We will get the data out of it uh, later. So let's just navigate back to the next item. We will. Uh, this is a good practice. See that build uh, something and see that it works and then add the extra elements. So we'll just build that. It will click through each of products. And here we will navigate to our start URL. That's in the end. And then we can make another search. So it will just go loop, loop, loop until we don't have any more rows here. And remember, we could have a thousand rows in our Excel sheet. This will still work. But now to inspect that we indeed do what we want, let's just add in a message box. This message box does nothing than just make it a little bit easier for us to see that it actually works. It will pause the workflow until we click OK in the message box. Let me click Save and run the file. Now we will just see that uh, we'll inspect that it will work for um, just clicking buttons. It will now read the Excel sheet and then we will um, open up the browser in a few seconds. Here, we open up the browser and now we can start to search. It will search in a little while here. Now search for the first product and hopefully we'll click like we saw here and we click here. That was the workflow that we created till now. We can now click OK. We go to the front page and then we will see that we will search for the next product here. We click that and of course it will work for the third product as well. So now we have gotten that to work. And it will end the robot now, like this. Now what we can do is that we can start to get the text. So whenever we are, let me close one of these browsers down. So let's say that we are in here, we wanna get this Varo number. Let me move this one up a little bit. We go down to UI path. So after we clicked here, we wanna have a get text. Let me find a text here. We drag this guy in. Then we indicate what we want to get. And that's this one. We can see that we cannot get the number only. So we'll probably get this text as well. And we'll see how we can do some string manipulation to edit out the VARO number. But let's just click here from the beginning. Then we go over to the output value. Control K. And we can say STR VARO number. Like this. This will save whatever we get out here into a string variable. Let's just print it out to our message box first to see that it actually works. And let me close down the browser and we can verify that our workflow works with uh, this one and we can indeed get the value number out. Now we'll just print out to the message box. So I'll run the workflow again. It will take a few seconds. I'm not sure why. Um, I think my computer is a little bit old. Uh, my home computer, that is. And now we run the workflow and we will search in a little while when the site has loaded, like here. So now we search the first 
element, then we click it, and we should hopefully get the Varo number out in the message box. We can see that we have a Varo number, and that is indeed this one here. So far, so good. Let's see if we can get the other numbers out as well. So now we search for the next one, and hopefully we will get the Varo number out for that. That works. We know that it will work for the third one, so let's just stop the robot. Now we just need to create the final step, and that is to write out the result back to our Excel sheet. So let's find an assign, like this. So after the text, we will assign a sort of row, and then we will say row, that's the current row, item, and we call our column name varu number. Like this. What do we want to uh, put in? We want to put this string that we get from the get text. We put that in. However, we want to uh, edit out the varo number and the colon and the space. So what we'll do is so after the string, like this, we can uh, have a dot. Then we'll say replace. This is vb.net. You should learn some vb.net if you want to automate in your path. However, you can do fine without. So then in quotation marks, we specify what we want to replace, and that is this guy here, varu number. Copy that back to your path, and then go up to the value. It's more easy to do here, but you could, of course, also do it down here. So varu number, remember the, sp uh, the colon and the space. Then we'll have a comma. Then two quotation marks, we will replace it with nothing. So then it, we will end up with just a number. That's exactly what we want. We can delete this message box because we saw that it worked. And now what we need to do is just to, inside the Excel application scope, but outside this browser sequence, so inside this do, we want to have a write range. And that will write, because remember, this one only writes to the data table. We want to write out to the Excel sheet. So find a write range. And on the Excel activities, drag this guy in. Remember to put it where it belongs. We want to write to sheet one. Let us delete this range because we just want to always start uh, with it. And then we want to add headers. And finally, let's put in the DT data. Now we can close down our browser. We can run the workflow and we can verify that we get our data to Excel. So now we clicked, okay? Now we reach the Excel data, the three rows. And then we will do the searches. We will wait a bit more. By the way, if you enjoyed this video, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get all the new videos about your app that will come up. Um, we will search now. Remember, we will have no message box this time. It will just get the VARO number out and save it to our data table. And then we will search for the next one here. Click here, we'll get the VARO number. Search for our third salo print. Click, get the VARO number. And then our workflow is done after we um, wrote the range to Excel. Let me minimize these two. Let us open the data and see that we indeed get the correct value numbers out. We can see that we got them here. Mission accomplished. Have a good day. Bye-bye.